I met her. I, I met her and I said, yeah, I want your mum to be here. And then it took me like six months before I contacted you, right? So then I contact Grace, and I think everyone can agree that she's one of the loveliest ladies. She, she entraps you into her house. No, and, so then, <laughs> and then she starts talking to you, right? And then you feel comfortable. Yeah. Oh, put your feet up, get a drink, you know, go to sleep or whatever. Yeah. That's yeah. Grace. And then the other thing that she does, I think everyone would agree, is that she gets you watching her TV programme. Oh, yeah? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Seriously, oh, yeah. I know. So I don't really watch TV, and all of a sudden I left Grace's house one day and I watched the whole series of Bling Culture back to back. <laughs> back to back. Left the house and I was like, come watch this, come watch this. And I watched the whole goddamn thing. Yeah. But needless to say, that's testament about your very lovely, lovely nature. And then we got thank talking, you. and she goes, yeah. oh, this event. And I said, oh, come and speak. And she's like, oh, thank you. So when I was younger, I was very, very asthmatic. I was very ill. I didn't go to school. I was taught in hospitals. I didn't go to infant school, and in primary school I couldn't do any sports whatsoever. And, um, and every time I came out of hospital, I went straight back into hospital. So I was around my mum, around adults, and then I grew out of it when I was 14, and confidence was almost natural then. So I away from my mum, I'm just going to the wide world and see what's out there. And then that confidence was always there, and then I went into banking, which probably was my biggest downfall, because that confidence turned into aggression. And I found that to compete with the the people on the trade floor as one of the only black women on the floor sometimes and competing with the other ladies that are fighting for position and you as a black woman, who do you think you are? And if you walk too nice and you speak too properly and all these things that people want to put you down for, they can take you down with them. And then you have to fight for that position. And then I had a boss that said, impossible is nothing, get it fucking done. That's what I was told. And that's who I became. I was to get it fucking done. So every time I spoke to IT, I don't care, it's the big boss, get it done. And then I found my nature was becoming more and more overtly aggressive and didn't like it and it was transcending onto my personal life. And then my mother died. And that's the funniest thing because I wasn't close to my mother at all. I was probably, in fact, out of the four children, the least closest to her. I fought with her like cat and dog and resented her for all sorts of reasons that I'm not going to go into. But she died and it had a massive impact because then I suddenly thought, oh my God, I didn't, I didn't connect with my mum and all these things that I think she should have done and didn't. And I crashed and burnt and I... Walked over London Bridge one day, I was in a contract, I had these high power contracts, I was earning money, and um, walked over London Bridge and I was in tears. And I didn't like the job I was in, I was, there was a white lady just not liking me because I was black, I don't care, I'm calling it out there. Um, and I had no more fight left in me, I felt like I was fighting the whole world every day, all the time, fighting boyfriends, fighting mum, fighting everybody, and I just lost the battle. I cried away on the bridge and decided I was giving my resignation stopped and then I decided that I was going to go and work in a school or do something different. The fact remains is I was renting a house that cost £2,500 a month and I had bills to pay and I went to work in a school and I got my first paycheck which was £991 and I thought, well, I'm going to deal with this, this is not going to work, this is not working in a school, it's not going to work. So I was forced to go back into contracts again but I wasn't happy and in, in between that Part of my other life is what I do is I work with young people. So I've worked in mentoring, I've worked in prisons. I'm a, a mind care, foster carer, and worked in support housing, housing 16 year olds in my house. So on top of that, I was looking after young people with problems and I can't even deal with my own. And so all of that I had to drop. The tenancy was coming up. My tenancy for my, my house that I was living in was coming back up and so I, I moved. I said, shut this down, get rid of this, this crazy money I'm paying, just have a nice lifestyle. So you can say to everybody, this is where I live. Mm -hmm. You your door and you feel proud about where you live, right? And you pay £2,500 a month. So that's the idealistic lifestyle I'm living. And the other thing that I talk about in confidence and self-esteem is suffering from imposter syndrome, which is something I suffer from massively. And imposter syndrome is thinking that you're no good at the job that you do. So I'm doing all these jobs and earning all this money thinking I'm good enough to earn this. And the way that I mitigated that was throwing myself into voluntary schemes in work. So anytime I worked in these big banks, I would always volunteer my services, work for schools, get myself involved in the black networks and feel like I'm giving back because I just felt uncomfortable about the money I was earning, working in Tower Hamlets and seeing my poor side and earning another and it couldn't resonate with me. And where I came from as well, I didn't come from a family of money and living in Chelmsford, I live in South Norwood. My, parent, my mum was a nurse, my dad couldn't read or write to save his life. And so that's the family life I came from. So, and and, my, and my, my sister was dyslexic and we fought as well, but she was always against me for, for a little bit as well. So it was hard, and it's always hard to feel myself and wondering where I am or where I fit into this world. 
But just giving you a little bit of background about myself, and I went to Portugal this week, so I didn't have time to. I've, I've written the song. It's amazing. Okay. It's amazing. Tap some of up to give me some key yeah. indicators. Now we are over here to talk about women's empowerment, and I'm here to promote how powerful we are. And I'm not going to say how strong we are because we are powerful. And and just hearing the stories today, this young lady in particular, I'm sorry to spot the spotlight, spotlight, but you are very powerful. You really are, and. You know, and you drove half his table to tears about the story, but I don't think we should be crying or celebrating with you. These are tears of joy. Because another one of our sisters is just coming through all of this. And, and as somebody else said, we are women, but we're not only women, we are at the helm of families, right? We are supposed to be the strongest part of the family. We are the people that glue the families together. And the ones that I think that the, the, the husbands or the boyfriends and, and the children look up to were supposed to come in from work and make sure the dinner's ready, and make sure that house is clean, and make sure that our husbands are served, and make sure that the children go to bed, and then look sexy at night, and perform some kind of magic porn star trick on our husbands. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the amount of times I go to bed and I'm like, I really don't want to do this. <laughs> I really can't do this tonight. And the worst thing is, is when he wants to go for a long session as well. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe if I do this really quick. You know, yeah. like, you like, get it over and done with in five minutes and it's not working that night. Yeah. Like, I want to go to bed. I don't want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm kidding. I, I, I find myself in that predicament as well. And on top of that, I was going through menopause, right? And menopause does all sorts of things to you. I've been going through it for 10 years and I didn't know what it was at first. Yeah. All I know is that I was getting confused. I was, And I was super organized, you know, doing what I was doing and I could run a thousand miles a minute and handle all sorts of things. And I was finding that I'm forgetting things. And I'm like, what, what did you say? What, what happened yesterday? And then because people know you as being superwoman, they can't understand how you've gone from superwoman to forgetting woman, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. So then you get you get vilified for that as well. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you can't cope with all this imperfectionism, right? I'm perfect. How can someone now start telling me I'm not perfect? And where are all these things? Now someone's picking on me and telling me all these things I'm doing wrong. And it was so hard to then start thinking, well, I know I can do this. And I know I didn't forget this. And I left a key in the door. And all these things started happening. And then periods all over the left, right and centre, and hot flushes and all sorts of things. And I shouldn't have been going through menopause in my late 40s. In my 40s, actually, I was going through menopause. And the doctors didn't know. Nobody told me until one day I went to the doctors and she was like, oh, you're, you're pre-menopausal, what do you mean? And she said something came back. Well, no one ever told me. And so, you know, it suddenly, you know, the dot the I's and cross the T's, I'm now menopausal and going through all of this. And everything that I've been going through now made sense. But I couldn't take medication, didn't want to take medication because I don't know enough about HRT. And anyone that knows me, I'm a research enthusiast, I research it to the nth, and I'm not putting any drugs into my body. And no, I've not had the jab, I will not get that in my I'm pure blood as far as I'm concerned, but that's what the name is. But I do understand for the many people that have had to go and get the jab as well, it's, it's not a case of it just being as black and white for them. But we are here about women's empowerment, and women's empowerment is a process of uh, empowering women, right? Who knows what women empowerment is? We celebrate it all the time. What's women empowerment? It's not a trick question. It's not a trick question. I just want to know. I just want to understand. What can I do? I just want to understand. I Absolutely. So it can be defined like um, accepting women's viewpoints, making an effort to seek them, and raising the status of women through education, awareness, literacy, and training. Basically, bigging ourselves up. Right? Is the way that I see her, she's she's a fierce black woman, and she's not skinny. But when she puts on her clothes and she has this big Afro wig and she walks in, and you can just see, I see power. I see a beautiful black woman in power as she walks through, and I always tell her that. And today she rang me up, and she was in tears. And this is a true story, I keep you not. And um, I said, what's wrong? What's going on? I don't think I'm coming to the room tonight. What's wrong with all my spirits have been in it? What's going on? And she said, we went to a party the other week, and someone turned around to her and said, um, you look like someone no man would ever mess with. Oh, wow. 
I don't know if anyone's been watching Married at First Sight. Yes. 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 Let's not talk about Barney, right? Let's not talk about Barney. Let's not talk about Barney. But um, on that program is 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 what Thomas and I love Thomas. I'm sorry, you know. But he's been going on about the fact that you you know you have to be careful about what you say to people and the yeah, power right. of words. Yeah. And as I said to you, you know, and I'm, I'm going to share something with you. When I was younger at school, I used to convince most people, and I'm sorry if I feel it. It's called fifty pence because I used to think it's funny. And you don't realise what that does because that means that they're half of something, right? And that. Repeated every day for four years at school is bound to have some kind of issue. Just the same as, as a woman is told you're too fat, you're too skinny, you're not pretty enough, you're too dark, you're too light, you wear a wig, you wear a wig, your hair's too bold. All of these things just keep resonating and make you think that's what you are. And I said to her, okay, so how many people made compliments to you that night? Around six people, okay. So one person said that, six people paid you compliments. Why are you looking at the one? negative thought is to come and kick you down, mash up your day, and potentially mash up the following week when six people told you something else. So what's that saying for the one comment? That's telling you that everybody has their own personal traits and thoughts and needs and it might not suit you. All right? and, and it may not be what they know about you or what they understand about you, but just the thought that they've made without even thinking about how it's going to affect you and why are you taking that in. And you can't afford to do that as women. We're already trying to be perfectionists, right? We're already trying to be uh, comfortable in our skin without looking at an next woman thinking, oh, she looks sexy, and just shrink down here and sit down because I can't compete with her. Because that's what we do, right? We go out and we see other women and we think they look great. And the amount of time some of my friends come out with me and tell me, I'm saying, because it's all right, because you're slim. You know how much men come around and turn around and say, I know I don't date women like you. I could just blow you away with one hand. You know, I'm not big enough. Or, you know, I go somewhere and I can't get someone to fit me because they don't do my size and they fit these lovely big belts of women. I mean, I mean, it swings and roundabouts how we think of each other. That's why you've got to love your damn self. I can't say it enough. And there's a man out there for everybody. And each of you have got a boyfriend or a man or a partner because they love you, not the next person that's in the room or sitting next to you. And that's what we've got to understand and love about ourselves and keep on with that. Because for too long, we want to self-criticise ourselves, self-criticise our sisters, as well, and instead of if you see a woman and she's out and something's wrong, instead of sister to your friends, go up and tell them, Excuse me, Miss Betty, you know what? And maybe this is not right. You know, pick it, pick about. You know what I mean? Not every woman's going to be receptive to what you're going to say. They might turn around and say, You know, F off or whatever the case may be. But most people are receptive to you wanting to help them, wanting to help them or, or enhance them, as I should say. And you're right about some people said, how do you empower a woman? It's all about supporting, right? Supporting the cause. Also, listening. Listening, listening is really, really important. And also feeling, like understanding the emotion that they're actually going through and providing, providing that necessary support that you guys are doing, like what we are doing right now. Um, I think also that women are empowered by situations, relationships, marriage, kids, career. Why is it always those four? Okay. And certainly with confidence and self-esteem, you feel like you've got the ability to handle anything in life, right? Anything that comes at you. But what if you're not confident and you don't have that self-esteem? How, how do you get it? Have you always been confident in each one of you? No. How do you find your confidence? <laughs> Seriously, how do you... Can you walk into a room and stand up and talk to you? Really? So how would you find your confidence? Would you know? To find it? I don't know how to find it. I haven't tried it. Anybody else? Actually, it's experience. Experience. Going out there and going up for the challenge and believing in you. Okay, so a number of key factors, because I know we're running out of time, so I'm just speeding on ahead, is stop comparing yourself to others. But you're right, it's hard to find um, confidence sometimes. I think sometimes some people are born with it, you know, or about their family, or, or how it's ingratiated in them. And, Positive affirmations as well. If someone tells you you're great every day. I was just about to say affirmations. You just say that. Anybody remember the film Pretty Woman? I'll never forget that line in Pretty Woman where she lies on the bed and says, Why are you a prostitute? Because someone that tells you something enough and then you start to believe in it. I've said this twice now. All right? If people tell you enough, you will start to believe it. So if you start telling yourself you're great, nine times out of ten, what's going to happen? You're going to believe it, right? So why not start telling yourself you're great? Why are you waiting on somebody else to give you that positive affirmation about yourself? And that's the problem what we do. We we'll wait for our boyfriends to turn around and say, I, I do it even now. 
You walk in, you're wearing a dress. Why do you say I look good? <laughs> and if it doesn't, you're vexed. You're vexed. And if he says, oh yeah, you look alright. What do you mean alright? Yeah. Why aren't you saying I'm looking good? So, yeah. And you're looking for that next affirmation. If it's not good, why is it just good? I'm supposed to look amazing. It's supposed to tell me I'm amazing. And this is where we're conditioned a little bit, haven't we? Yeah. And then Coming back to what this young lady said about vibrations, just remember, right? Words are powerful. Okay. Your thoughts are vibrations. How you think creates how you feel. That feeling actually becomes an emotion, and that emotion actually creates a vibration. And vibrations are actually magnetic, and so they attract things to you. So if you are vibrating negative energy, you will attract as such. So ladies, vibrate positive energy. Yay.